Joe Biden is approaching his inauguration tomorrow with sky high expectations, but also largely positive marks for how he's been handling the transition. A brand new CNN poll is out giving a good look at how many Americans are viewing Biden right now. Our political director, David Chalian, is here with me now. So talk to me more about what Americans think of how Biden has been handling this. Yeah, two thirds of Americans in our brand new exclusive poll conducted by SSRS Anderson, 66% approve of the way Joe Biden is handling uh, this transition, 29% disapprove. Look at how that stacks up against his recent predecessors. And you'll see that Biden is sort of in the category with uh, Bill Clinton and, and George W. Bush. If you see on the next slide there, yeah, Clinton at 67%, George Bush at 61%. Not the sky high approval ratings of Obama going into office in 2009, but also not down here at 40% which is where the country had the approval rating for Donald Trump four years ago. One other thing to note, Anderson, Joe Biden's favorability rating is now at 59% in this poll. 38% have an unfavorable opinion. That 59% is a high watermark for Joe Biden since November 2008 when he was elected vice president. I also understand you're hearing from people what kind of job they think a president like Biden will do. Yeah, nearly six in 10 Americans expect him to do a good job. 61% say he'll do a good job. 35% say he'll do a poor job. So expectations are pretty solid uh, for Joe Biden. Take a look at a list of specific initiatives and you see that vast majorities of Americans think he'll get it accomplished. 83% say he's gonna get the additional stimulus pass. 74% restore relations with allies around the world. 70% say the 100 million vaccines in the first 100 days promise will be delivered upon. 64% establishing a public option for health care in America to Obamacare. They think that'll get done. The one place, the one place of Joe Biden's agenda reducing the political divide in America, 44% say he'll get that done. Actually, a majority, 53%, do not think he will be able to accomplish reducing the political division in America. Big mm. challenge for him. Yeah, David uh, Chalian, appreciate it. Yeah. Brianna? Anderson, we have some more in our breaking news. Capitol riot investigators are narrowing in on extremist groups and military style coordination as the first conspiracy charges are in. Plus, we have some, uh, it's pretty stunning, of course, that it's unclear whether Vice President Mike Pence is going to attend the president's departure ceremony tomorrow as the White House invitations are getting rejected by former staffers. Any moment, President-elect Joe Biden will deliver remarks before departing his home state for the inauguration as the president spends his final day in seclusion. Joining us now is Gloria Borgia, uh, as well as uh, our entire team, uh, Neem Malika Henderson uh, and Brianna Keeler. Uh, this is the uh, display of the colors in, uh, in Wilmington, Delaware. Gloria, I mean, obviously this is going to be just an incredibly historic 48 hours uh, in our nation's capital and for our country. It is. I, I don't think, I uh, know, we haven't ever seen anything like this before. You have a, a, a country paralyzed by a, by a pandemic and a nation on edge as uh, they worry about the possibility of violence during an inauguration. You have a country politically divided, an, uh, a sitting president who refuses to attend the inauguration of the person who will succeed him. Um, it is quite remarkable because what we are used to in this country is a peaceful transfer of power and Washington DC right now looks like a fortress. And so I think the pictures will tell everything. Um, and I think, you know, you have a president who wants a great send off uh, that he's probably not going to get as big as he wants. And you have a nation waiting uh, to hear what Joe Biden has to say because we know what he wants to do is unite the country. And there are a lot of people really skeptical about that. Nia Malika, what, what, do, what do you make of what Mitch McConnell did on the Senate floor, blaming President Trump for uh, the riot and saying it was based on a lie? Well, listen, he spoke the truth. Here's a man in Mitch McConnell who basically made lots of excuses for Donald Trump over these last uh, four years. But at this point, with this president uh, going uh, out of office at this point and what we all saw and witnessed at the Capitol on our, our televisions, uh, Mitch McConnell is speaking the truth. What that means for what Mitch McConnell does going forward in terms of convicting this president and what uh, the other Republicans do, whether or not they're going to be able to amass 
uh, 17 Republicans uh, to rebuke this president, to convict him, and to ultimately say he can't run for office ever again. That's yet to be seen. From what we have seen from these Republicans, uh, they already seem to be making noises that, oh, well, maybe it's unconstitutional uh, to convict a president that's no longer in office. I think we in some ways see the same behavior that we've seen all along, which is them going along with Donald Trump because of the hold he has on Republicans uh, nationally. But we are really in for it in terms of this dueling uh, you know, kind of split screen of Joe Biden trying to uh, enact his agenda, get cabinet officials confirmed, as well as an impeachment that will unfold in the next days uh, in this country once Nancy Pelosi sends uh, that impeachment article over to the Senate. It's a real historic time. And I think, you know, average Americans have a lot of anticipation about tomorrow. Uh, there is fear, as Gloria is saying. I'm sitting in the Capitol here and had to go through a military checkpoint to come into uh, the office, but I also think Americans want to hope again, right? They want to be able to look forward to something. They want to look forward to uh, COVID being handled uh, in a way that it hasn't been so far, um, a smoother vaccine rollout. You, you saw in those polls uh, that David uh, rolled out there, there are Americans who feel hopeful about Joe Biden getting his agenda passed, even though they are less hopeful about one of the things that Joe Biden wants to do, uh, which is to bring the country to, together and bridge that political divide. So that is going to be a big challenge uh, for this incoming president. And we'll see what he says in his inaugural uh, tomorrow about it. Can I can I just add something onto onto what Nia is saying? What Mitch McConnell said to me uh, to me was remarkable because here is a man who has supported Donald Trump. We know that personally he doesn't love him, but he actually said that the mob was provoked by Donald Trump and that it was fed lies. We know that privately he has told people that what Donald Trump uh, committed was an impeachable offense. And how will this affect how he manages that uh, debate on the floor for impeachment and what stand he eventually takes and what impact he will have on other Republicans? Yeah. I think we're seeing this today. This is further than he has ever gone. And I think he's sending some kind of signal perhaps about what he's going to do on the floor of the Senate. And Arlette, I wonder what we can expect from Biden here in the lead up to the inauguration and also what his goal is going to be uh, during his speech, which no doubt is going to stand in stark contrast to what we heard from President Trump four years ago. Well, I think what you are likely to see from the president-elect in just a short bit is uh, it's a send-off. It's a farewell to the state that brought him here to Washington, where he served for 36 years in the Senate. But the president-elect will also, a little bit later today, as he flies down here to Washington, he will be coming to a very different Washington reality than when he left uh, the White House just four years ago. The country is more divided than ever in this moment. And in his inaugural address, he is really expected to touch on those tones of unity, trying to bring the country together amid this crisis of not just the pandemic, but also that insurrection we saw up on Capitol Hill just last week. And you'll, you'll remember from the start of his campaign, uh, the president-elect framed himself as a person uniquely positioned uh, to be able to wage this battle for the soul of the nation, as he described it. And his advice have long thought that he is the person uh, for this moment. And I remember speaking with one of his top advisors, Ted Kaufman, uh, uh, shortly before Biden even entered this race. And he had told me at that point in April 2019 that they knew that if Biden were to be elected, that he would be inheriting potentially a very divided country and that they expected that the president, even back then, might put up roadblocks to him uh, as he uh, would take the White House if Biden were to win. And that is the reality uh, that really had set in here over the course of the past few months. But what we expect Biden to talk about tomorrow is really this need for the country to come together. And he's hoping that he can be the one to help deliver that in this moment.